Uh, welcome back to my channel. Uh, this week I'm going to be painting up the Chaos Lord from last week as per requested by a lot of you. Um, I did want to quickly just say thank you so much for all the support that my latest video has received. It means so much to me and I just, it's literally exploded in comparison to the other videos I've done. But just thank you. It means a lot. And anyway, back to the video. For the paint job, I wanted to go for a more heresy-centered color scheme, this being the black shoulder pads, as it adds some variation to the model in the current 40k scheme, which I'm not a massive fan of. However, replacing the red shoulder pads with black ones makes the warband slightly more unique and just adds a bit more contrast and color variation. To start with, I primed the model black. I personally like the matte colours made by Colourforge. I use Raven Black in this video, however any black spray paint will be fine. You could even use an airbrush or paint on primer. To start with the painting, I did two thin coats of Barak Narberg. Following on from that, I then began to layer up a new mix with Galvor Back Red. However, any choice of paint colour will be fine here, as long as it follows the same general shade as these two paints. Each took a subsequent layer that I did, I added slightly more Galvor Back Red into the Barak Nar Burgundy, until I was left with a pure layer of Galvor Back Red. I then did a thinned down layer of this, before moving on to the stippling. The stippling I did by slowly mixing Red Bear's Red into the Galvor Back Red. However, again, any brick red of your choice will do here. I stippled onto the highlights only, and once I'd finally worked my way up again, mixing in slightly more Red Bear's Red into the Galvor Back Red, every layer, I then finally did one layer where I mixed in some Corn Red to the Word Bearer's Red, and this was my final highlight layer. This pushed the model to be slightly too bright for my liking, however we will do something about that later on. I then painted the black. This was done by following the same steps as last time, just this time with a black and a grey. I used Abaddon Black and Dawnstone. However, I only did three layers with this, only using very little grey as well. This was to ensure that the colour still maintained a more black semblance and red as black. This was done on both of the shoulder pads as I wanted to make sure that I kept the heresy paint job. However, this also means that the Chaos Lord matches the rest of my army that I've painted so far. And please let me know in the comments if you'd like to see the rest of my army. The next step for me was the silvers. I paint my silvers with a mixture of true metallic metal paints and slightly non-metallic metal painting theory. I start off by picking out all of the silver parts in the model, the trim and belt buckles and the power fist claws. I start off with a roughly 50-50 mixture of a light silver and a black. In my case, Runefang Steel and my normal black paint of choice, Abdon Black. I then picked out some of the highlights with, with a mixture that's more silver to black. I then did any further highlights on that with an almost purely silver paint, overall creating a more shiny silver as I'm able to pick out the highlights more precisely. For the skin, I wanted to go for a more strange skin tone. This would be painted on the torso and the arm, but moving part of the blade blank for later. So, as a contrasting colour, I chose to do a purple skin tone. I would highly recommend painting orcs if you want practice with painting muscle groups, as their generally more cartoony proportions lend perfectly to learning, as I did here with my paint boy. Firstly, I did a layer of pure purple and water. I used Phoenician purple, and then I did a mixture of bone and purple. I'm using a Shabti bone here. This is a roughly 60-40 mixture of purple to bone that I mixed with water to a consistency that I was happy with. I then layered the mixture on the main muscle groups and proceeded to work my way up to a mixture of around 70-30 bone to purple over the course of three layers. Following this, I then placed a more watered down layer of the final highlight over half of the unpainted part of the sword, closest to the arm, before then quickly adding a layer of watered down silver to the other end and blending them together. This may take you a few layers to get smooth, so just remember to take your time with this step. For the leather on the two belts, I used a warm brown as the base coat, before then doing scratchy highlights with a more orangey brown. This then left the leather in a way that I was happy with it. Now, I'm not the best at painting leather, I will not claim to be. I just like to do a simple paint job that makes it look decent on the final model. When doing all of the part bits of parchment, I chose to do the obvious two front parchments and both of the tabards. I started with a cold brown before mixing it with a medium tan colour. I was using dryad bark and zandri dust in these steps. And then I did scratchy highlights, going vertically across the parchment in order to give a bit more texture visually. I did this to an almost completely tan highlight, however I did leave some elements of the parchment, the previous shades in order to again add texture. Moving on to the candles, these were incredibly simple to do. I painted them a warm brown, Rhinox Hide in my case, before then mixing in a bone colour and overbrushing a few layers on top, each time with more bone in 
the subsequent layers until I was left with a roughly 75 to 25 mixture of bone to Rhinox hide on top. Now for the bones, I personally picked out the power pack vents, skull and spine on the power pack, the teeth on the sword, and then the claws and assorted spikes on the rest of the model. I did a similar effect with the candles, where I start, but I started with my cold brown instead of the warm one, and again layered up to a bone colour, with each subsequent layer getting smaller than the last. The only variation was the horns on the helmet, where I made sure the base of the horns were a lighter colour to the tips, to emulate a more goat horny look. I decided to do the tassels on the power fist arm a green colour, I simply applied a dark green base coat, and then highlighted up to a medium green. I used wild green and raw boss green respectively. Following this, I began to work on the base. Starting with a heavy overbrush with my silver, I applied. I then started to apply a light blue, I used Thousand Suns blue in this case, to the platform that the Lord was standing on, and then a brass accent to the four bars down the front of the platform. I chose blue because the word bearers are red, so I feel that the blue adds a nice contrast to the base. And the brass on my wet palette, I then applied some thin, uh, thinned down over the silver that I put on the two the chaos stars on, on the Lord's chest. Following that, I then applied some sterling mud technical paint over the uh, parts of the base that weren't the platform and set the model aside to dry fully. Once that had finished, I then applied two washes, a roughly 50-50 mixture of water and null oil. This was first, as it seeks out the recesses and acts as almost a panel wash or like a panel liner, which is why I quite like it. And then I added another 50-50 mix of water and Agrax Earthshade instead, uh, after, this, after the null oil had dried. Uh, this was just to help darken everything down a tiny bit and make sure that the highlights weren't too bright and also blend it also helped blend everything all the layers into one another a bit more once that had done i then used vallejo model color white i then applied this to the eyes pipes and vents and also the candles i then applied a heavily diluted version of my dark green and once that had dried i came back in with the white and added a couple more points that i wanted to be extra bright I then applied a diluted mixture of a cold yellow and a light green, and this then helped create a sort of semi-glow effect in the eyes and pipes and the vents. Moving on to the candles, I did the same thing again, but this time I started with a diluted bright red. This was applied to the top of the, can uh, of the flames before I then put a diluted warm yellow at the bottom of the flames, and then I put a orange that was diluted in the middle to blend them together. I did some wet blending here to help make it look like a more smooth transition. Lastly, for the steps that I would recommend, I took a slightly thinned black to the parchment and made some scratchy lines going horizontally across to look like scripture. If you want to add some extra flair, you can also do a semicircle at the base of the back tabard with three arrows coming out of it to imitate half of a chaos star. For an optional step you don't have to follow, I like to do it on the majority of my Chaos models, this just adds some extra contrast over the base and the ankles of my models, before then mixing some fake snow, I'm personally using the Army Painter granules here, and some gloss varnish, I used to sell Art Coat, and applied that over the areas I dry brushed on the base for some added contrast against the model, this creates a dried snow effect. Then, two thin coats of black around the base rim, but you can do any colour of your choice, and a matte varnish later, and we have my word there is Chaos Lord, ready to lead the Serrated Sons chapter and my possessed into battle. I hope you liked the video, and thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe, and if you have any advice on how I can improve, please let me know as well. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time where I corrupt a venerable vehicle of the Imperium.